Hi guys, I'm Ryan Newsman and welcome to my flight hunting channel. already done so consider hitting the subscribe button down below uh, that'll keep you up to date with everything as I upload it uh, my channel already contains hundreds of videos covering a wide range of both patterns and techniques from the basic to the more advanced uh, so without delay let's get on with the show hi guys welcome back uh, so another of our Canadian themed flies and this one is the Abbey shrimp uh, tied or created by uh, Mark LeBlanc. So this is a size 2 partridge. This is a code N, uh, but it said other singles and that range are available, possibly an M. So I'll take my tying thread, add it on and take it back to a point just in advance of the point of the hook. So we're going to tie in a silver oval tinsel as our tag. And I'm going to go back. In this instance, I'm going to go a little bit further back than the point. So, letting your thread hang will let you gauge how far you are back. So, I'm going to go back to a point sort of midway uh, between our point and barb and then I'll come forward making a nice even bed to tie our uh, tag in on just to the point where the shank starts to flatten out again and then we will wrap the oval tinsel forward to create Our tag and tie that in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stretch my tinsel out here on the side of the hook and take sort of wide catching turns on it just to take it up to the return eye and then I will fold that back on itself at the return and tie back. I'm going to take it back on my side because I'm going to wrap this one uh, opposite direction to what I normally would for a normal right handed tire when we put it on as a rib. So the rear of this fly is a fluorescent green floss so I'm going to use here a glow bright number 12 Take that. I have a strand here. Now it's probably 20 inches long, maybe. Might be a little overkill, but I'm going to use it to level itself. So I catch it in behind the thread, if you can see there. Match up the two tips, and then this will slide on my thread, and I can slide that down and tie it in nice and neatly. So, I'm going to leave those hanging there and I'm going to tie in uh, my tail. Now, anybody who's seen me tie will notice that I do tie things in in some unusual, uh, how would you put it, orders maybe. So, for the tail we're going to use some white polar. I'm just going to get rid of some of that under fluff there. And I'm going to measure this up. Put a turn across it in its middle just to hold it back. It is a material that's kind of difficult to control, so I wouldn't stress too much with it. 
and pull it back on itself. So what we're going to do then is to put in a strand of pearl crystal hair and we're going to double that and then double it back over on itself and that will give us four strands. So we take our strand, double it, set it on the top. I'm going to pull it forward until it's the length of the tail. And then double it back on itself. Now, some people say, why am I not tying it in here? Because I don't want to create bulk at the back. I'm trying to create a level underbody. So we'll double that back on itself and now we'll wrap back until we get it tied in level with the uh, butt or tag of the fly and advance forward. Hold this crystal hair and trim it off. So uh, you could create a tapered body if you want. Now you could use a white uh, floss or whatever and create a nice underbody uh, or if you want just a flat one just wrap. So we'll take the two strands. I like to flip my fly so that I can see what's happening on the far side and I'm sort of wrapping so that one is advancing. Uh, you can see they're slightly separated so one is advancing the wrap and the other one is over wrapping the previous turn. You can go back over it and create a little bit of a, a taper. And I'm making the body roughly 50 50, but you could alter the dimensions if you want. So we'll just wrap this on slightly onto the front portion. Now we don't intend to. Uh, have that shown so we know we can wrap back over it to whatever point we want to start our peacock section of the body on. So I'm going to take two strands of peacock curl here, tie them in by their tips, a few turns to hold them, and snip that off. And then I'm going to run a light cover and a wax onto my thread. Stretch the two hurls out in line with it. And these little bits as you stripped it off, these are what I'm going to catch to twist this on. So don't cut them off your feather. Strip them off because you'll find it very difficult to wrap otherwise. So you could wrap them themselves, but I find that this gives me a nice even effect and the fact that I've wrapped it over a thread core means that every wrap has thread covering and tying down the hurl and to me that makes it more secure. Get to the end just unravel that so that the stalks become separate again and a couple of turns just to hold it in place. So as a right handed tire I generally rib that way but because I brought it to this side I'm going to rib this direction. One, two, three, four, five, bring it up, tie over it. And trim that off. So that's the body tied. So now we're going to put in a throat and we're going to put in uh, a wing. So the uh, throat on this one is a natural black uh, squirrel. I don't have a natural one so I'm going to use a black squirrel, a dyed one. So 
I'm going to take a bunch of that. And what I'm going to do is measure it till it's back to around about the bend of the hook. Transfer to my other hand and trim. I'll flip my fly over. So it's this way it's almost as if you're tying it in like a wing. And a couple of turns to hold it in place. So the uh, wing is the same but we need a, a green or fluorescent green crystal flash underneath it. So we're going to put a few strands of that under and then add a similar wing to what went under the throat. So we take our fluorescent green crystal flash, we'll take out one strand and double it over, match up those two tips and I'm going to tie this on till it's sort of level with the back of the green section, pinch and loop, then flip this over on itself to double it and trim that off. So now we have four strands as an underwing and we'll take our black squirrel again, take another bunch, same as we did underneath, measure it for length to around about the bend of the hook, transfer hands and trim it off. Set that on top. And tight. So squirrel I find doesn't like to compress uh, and therefore is prone to pulling out. So what I'm going to do is to take my tying thread and just run my super glue brush on it for two inches say. Then I'll hold these two bunches down, pinching sideways because I don't want them to display round. I'll wrap over my cut ends. And that'll help to secure all that in place. Now, next, uh, this fly has some strands of tippet over the top of the wing. So if we take a tippet here, so you could just strip bits off and set it on, but what I'm gonna do is to separate this back. What I want it to be is around about the length of the point or barb possibly, depends on your own personal Taste, and I'm going to nip out the center of that feather and then again I'm going to pull these strands here forward and that should give me two matched sort of like a V as such. So I'm going to then find that down a little bit more, a little bit less. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in uh, that feather right on top and in the gap where I created the V and then holding it under pressure I'm just going to pull these, the feather forward and shorten this down until it is the length that suits. So here she's level roughly with the barb. Take a second turn over that If you want, you could even fold it back for added security, up to yourself. What we're going to do is just trim that off. Wax up our thread. Bind that down. So time to finish our fly off with a hackle. So I'm going to use a natural black cock hackle here. 
create a collar. Uh, I'm doubling this. Uh, if you check in the corner, there should be an info button, and that'll lead you to a techniques section that I have, and you should find doubling uh, hackles videos in there. So I'll tie it in by its tip and flip it back on itself. Tie over it and take our time. Flip forward and then we'll wrap on the hackle. So you want to stick straight out, just wrap it. But stocks are not round. They tend to be oval uh, in one direction or another. So by stroking or uh, changing the direction of the stock by twisting it as you wrap, you can make your hackle lie in whatever direction you want. So if you want it to be nice and Uh, low line then you flip it so that it's wrapping on the flat and if you want to stick out more then just let it stick out perpendicular as you wrap so take a turn across our stock I like to flip the stocks back as I tie them in for added security just shape up my head with the thread you can see the head is very small it's always better to have a small head and then you can build it up to whatever shape you want it's very difficult whenever you've got uncontrolled tie-in and a big massive head you can't make it smaller so as you can see I whip finished with my hands there and I did two and that means that even if one gives there's always one to keep the fly together and we'll take some clear varnish and varnish the head so that'll require more coats of varnish whenever that dries but essentially that's our fly tied The Abbey Shrimp by Mark LeBlanc. So hopefully you like what you see. If you did, give us a like, subscribe, tell your friends, check out the other videos that I have, and I will be doing more uh, Canadian type flies in future. Uh, so until next time, tight lines, and thanks for watching.